All right, everybody, welcome to the September 1st, first Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call. Um, as you are all aware, two things that we must abide by. The first one here is the antitrust policy notice. Uh, and then the second is the code of conduct, which is linked in our agenda. Uh, so if we could go to the agenda, um, we will see we have the standard announcement, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter it goes out each Friday to hundreds of Hyperledger developers. If you have something that you want to reach those developers, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is also linked in the agenda. Uh, as a reminder, we canceled the September 15th uh, TSC meeting due to conflicts with travel from, from the Hyperledger Global Forum. Uh, so we will be skipping that one. We do have uh, plans for next week for a presentation at a minimum and uh, at least task force discussion. So um, we will definitely be meeting next week. Um, any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Actually, I have a question, but I don't know if it's best to ask now or later. Uh, what's your question? Essentially, uh, since I've uh, joined Ceramid so recently, I want to understand how to make uh, contact with me more easy and uh, what I should do for the Hyperledger site. So I'm, uh, I'm just not sure how to interact the best. That's my question. So interact specifically with uh, the Hyperledger Foundation Indeed. or with the Technical Steering Committee? With Hyperledger Foundation and who should I ask about that? Okay, uh, so we do have some staff members on the call today. Uh, Daniela is on the call, Rai, Sean, and Hart, I think I saw also on the call. Um, so these are the, the folks that would, um, looks like maybe Benjamin's also on the call, um, also be able to help you depending on what it is that you're looking for. Great. So I hope it's going to be normal about the details a bit later. Yes, definitely. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements that anybody has? All right. Uh, if there's no other announcements, then we do have the, the quarterly reports. I did see the ROHA one did get the uh, TSC members added as reviewers uh, sometime while I was asleep. Um, so we do have that one to review as well. Uh, I know that there wasn't a whole lot of folks who had a chance to review that since that uh, got added. Um, we also have the Bevel grid and transact reports that came in as well. Um, I didn't see any specific questions um, other than I think I had one on the transact one, which I'm hoping we will get answered. But does anybody have any questions that we should follow up with these reports on? Arun? Um, sure. I think this is in regards to one of the task force proposal as well, which I saw in the previous um, meetings agenda, but I don't see it for some reason. And also uh, related to Bevel, right? So um, is somebody from Bevel participating? If yes, what's, I mean, uh, who to reach out for the task force proposal itself? I think there's a yeah. few things that were unclear. Yeah, for sure. So there is a there is a task force forming around um, kind of tools that are focused on uh, deployment of Hyperledger fabric. And uh, I think that we had it on there and then it, it got pulled back because uh, they weren't quite ready. Uh, I think we jumped the gun a bit on getting that on the agenda. Um, so I think they're looking to, to have some discussions during the uh, global forum, right? To, to really firm up the plans for that and then bring that back to the TSC after the global forum, as far as a proposal goes. Um, now, uh, the 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 link that we had in last week's agenda um, is, let me see if I can find that quickly here. 
um, because the person who created that is probably the person that you should reach out to um, as far as the, you know, who do you, who do you talk to to get more involved in that particular task force? Um, so his name is Josh Newbel, uh, um, and you can find his email address on, on the link for that task force. I'll put the task force link again in the, the TSC chat um, so that you can uh, get that name and the email address if you're interested in uh, participating in that particular task force, Arun. Sounds good. Thanks. I mm -hmm. think meeting at Global Forum should be good as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions on the report, Dano? So this is more of a meta question about timing for reports that aren't on yet. Mm -hmm. um, and Rai Jones started a thread in, in Discord. So uh, versus due on the week we're canceling the meeting and there is an open gap on 10 6. Should we shuffle some of these due dates around so that they can be due during a meeting we intend to hold? I usually uh, don't do that uh, because these are the due dates. Um, and we don't do the presentations anymore. But uh, I see the, the teams would be Ursa, Bezu, Caliper. Um, looking at the calendar, uh, I could either move those I mean, we could move them to ten six. That puts them in quarter four. Uh, how it, it doesn't matter. It's mostly for Ursa. Is more of my concern. We can triple up on a week if we need to. Yeah, I, I think I think like Rai said, it's probably okay um, because okay. we wouldn't expect to get that until the fifteenth anyway. Um, and if it happens to be a week late, um, then it's a week late, right? Um, as far as it coming in. So I, I think it's probably okay to leave it. I. I did include them all here. Um, obviously, the one that's due today, Cello, I did see is getting work done, and then Firefly and Ursa I included on the upcoming reports. Just to note that we did have um, the one that's coming due the week of Global Forum. So, but I, I do think that we could just leave it and um, you know be understanding if for some reason Ursa happens to be late because of Global Forum. Okay, that sounds fine. As long as it's a, a known. No issue, no, not to be an issue. So, yeah, we're we're generally, I say, we the, the royal we, the body, the TSC is generally fairly lax on getting the reports as long as they come in. Um, so it, in general, it's not uh, alarms don't go off until you like miss a quarter. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, any other questions on the quarterly reports? I have updated the quarterly report for, so it wasn't checked uh, by some yet. I'm sorry, I haven't notified others. So I hope that helps. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Victor. I did see that come through. Um, and so I would expect the, the TSC to be reviewing those. Um, that report along with the others as uh, as and when they can. So appreciate you adding that. Okay. Sorry for I didn't that it's that late. Oh no worries. No worries. Good. Um okay. Any other questions and on the reports before we move on to the discussion items? Okay. Uh, so we do have two discussion items today, uh, one that Dano brought up and then just the update on uh, the Project Health Task Force. Um, is there any other discussion items that anybody would like to add to the agenda as I don't think this is probably going to take uh, the remaining time that we have left? Okay, uh, not seeing anything. If something does come up, please don't hesitate to, to bring it up before we close the call um, today. But Dano, did you wanna take us through the the discussion on the Hyperledger BASU GitHub concerns? Yeah, so um, this week we had one of our regular BASU calls and um, I don't know how many people follow what goes on in the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, but there is, uh, there's no ask specific ask today, but we just wanna know what's possible if things do change. Um, but there's no, no need to ask immediately. Um, this topic came up when we were discussing moving from Circle CI to GitHub Actions um, for, our, for our CI, and we're hosted on GitHub. 
And one of the maintainers said, uh, do we really want to be um, entrenching ourselves even further in GitHub? And to give context to that, um, first I need to step back and give a, a context to the context. Um, there was a, a mixer on the Ethereum mainnet network called Tornado Cache, and these mixers are where you would, um, what, what, what they're presented as providing is privacy of transactions. So uh, you put money in and you can't see who gets the money. <clears throat> Typical privacy stuff you might find in a uh, layer one base implementation or in a fabric implementation so, so that outside people don't know what's going on. Um, but the problem is, is this privacy feature, um, according to the OFAC, the Office of Foreign Asset Control, was used to um, evade sanctions from North Korea. So as a consequence on Ethereum mainnet, um, that the address was, was banned um, by the, put on the OFAC list and several accounts that interacted with it. And what GitHub did, so that's the first context of what happened. Um, GitHub went ahead and removed that project from GitHub. And um, you know, as they should, it's appropriate with, with an OFAC regu regulatory ban. Um, it's, it's public, it's known, it's, it's their duty and obligation on the law to do that. Um, they also banned one of the developers. Um, this is the developer who was arrested by Dutch authorities. Um, again, that is public, that is known. Um, it's understandable why they did that. So that's not where the concern arises from. Um, there are a few other developers who have periphery involvement. They may have submitted a patch or two, or they may have worked on, on tooling around it. Um, and they had no, uh, no public government sanction against them. And uh, GitHub went ahead and banned their accounts and provided no explanation for it. Um, now, I don't think anybody on Besu or any of the maintainers are involved in this type of a project. Um, but the concern coming up, and, and also in, in the all core devs, the, uh, the group, the phone call group that um, establishes the standards for Ethereum mainnet, um, two weeks ago, the meeting was focused on this. It became a censorship concern of what happens if some of the validators um, refuse to propagate uh, transactions to OFAC sanctions address, and what happens if some don't, and what impact does that have on the network, um, which has some follow on effects for um, rather than just OFAC transactions about layer two. Um, verification transactions, if those two could be similarly censored, and it presents questions about health of the network. So, so with that basis, the concern from the BASU team is, um, is what happens if GET starts overreaching and who they decide violates their terms of service without appeal and without discussion? And, um, you know, do we, what options would they have if the BASU maintainers and the rest of, of the Ethereum community decide that nothing should be hosted on GitHub, it should be hosted elsewhere? So there's no ask, but the question is, do projects have to be hosted on GitHub? And if they can be hosted elsewhere, um, what sort of, of startup would need to be done to make sure that we could host those? I know we used to do Garrett, self-hosted Git uh, repositories via Garrett, um, but would like GitLab, would, um, I think there's another, you know, Bitbucket, a series of other Git resources. Is that something that the TSC would support if, if the base maintainers decided to pull everything off of GitHub? And we're not doing it today. That's not the discussion. But we, we need to know what our what our boundaries are. Uh, I will uh, provide a little bit of context from a staff perspective. As you said, we used to use Garrett and Jenkins, uh, and those went away for reasons. Um, we are not we Hyperledger Linux Foundation are not married to GitHub. And it, it's much easier for us, uh, but the Chinese community is using their local uh, GitHub alike for the effort that they're doing. Um, we we do support GitLab. Uh, I'm not sure who has the best tooling in terms of uh, who's best integrated with our stuff, but from my perspective, that should be a, a secondary uh consideration so Git, i know gitlab is on the list of things that we have the tooling to support i know garrett is the money for when we shut down garrett and jenkins that money was used for other stuff uh around ci like the circle ci money uh came in a large part originally from shutting down uh garrett and jenkins so that's that's enough for me Okay, and there would be an alternative CI because I know we, we want to get off the circle CI and onto GitHub Actions as a cost saving measure, but um, if necessary, um, and we have to move off of GitHub, clearly we couldn't use GitHub Actions. 
but there would be some other alternative CI um, capability that would be made available. Uh, well, uh, GitLab has a very similar uh, thing to GitHub Actions. Okay, uh, that's so. Good. It, yeah, it's not exactly point for point the same, but it's very similar. Um, and transition should be not trivial, but doable. Okay. So to be clear, we're not asking to move today, but you know, I think the maintainer just want to know what the boundaries and options are. If 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 things if nothing more changes, I don't think anything will change. But if if things deteriorate with the number of people that GitHub is banning, um, there might be a motion to move. So, thanks. Yeah, I think you know just uh, to add to this, right? I think there there is a a benefit for all of the projects to be on the same platform, right? Um, it's easier to run scripts and tools to find out, you know, things about what's going on in the community um, and those sorts of things. So I, I do think it would probably be a, an interesting discussion about what do we want to do at that point, right? Of, um, you know, is it, is it okay to have two? Right, like for those who don't want to change versus those who do, and um, you know, there, I think there is going to be some interesting sorts of discussions that would come from this sort of request. Jim, I saw you came off mute. Uh, no specific comments, just switching devices. Sorry. Okay, no worries. No worries. To to further explain Tracy's explanation. It used to be a requirement for all Linux Foundation projects that you used Garrett and Linux Foundation hosted it. Hyperledger uh, was the first project that didn't do that. We were split for the first several years where the Fabric family of things were on Garrett and everything else is on GitHub. And it was terrible. And now we're at the point where everything's on GitHub. And I'm not going to say it's great, but it's all all the problems are in one place. So we've done this before and it wasn't great. Yeah, I just, you know, I know that um, part of that too was, you know, uh, stopping potentially people from contributing to other projects because it was on a different, you know, platform than what they were used to um, or what they like to use. So there, there were some challenges and I think we would, you know, want to explore what those challenges might be. Uh, you know, if and when this becomes a, a question to the TSC. Aru? Okay. Hey, um, just to understand more from Dano regarding the concerns. So, because, I mean, this is not specific to GitHub, right? This concern would still be there no matter where we switch to. So, the, the concern specifically is actually with GitHub because they're getting aggressive in who they're banning for their terms of service, ones that aren't required by government action and they're not explaining or justifying what they're doing. Um, that's more of the censorship concern is that it's being done opaquely. Um, and, and to give more context, I don't think that Besu is a project and as the maintainers would lead the charge off of it, but it's something they're concerned about that there might be a groundswell if it happens again and all of the other Ethereum projects start decamping from, from GitHub, they don't wanna be stuck there and be the only one if everyone's collectively made the decision that GitHub is not acceptable. So it's mostly making sure that um, you know they won't be left behind if another large event happens. Um, I know that there's um, one Ethereum client called Akula. They depend on a particular database, and that database has been banned. But that's because the database is funded by one of the sanctioned Russian banks. So there are you know we start splitting up you know so they had to move some of their code hosting to the Russian equivalent of GitHub, um, and so they've got this weird split hosting. So it is affecting some corners of the community, but I don't think it's become a groundswell to move in that motion. But, you know, judging the ocean, it, it could on short notice, um, but I don't see it right now. But I do know that there is the risk if, 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 if things deteriorate in, as far as who GitHub is banning. Thanks. I misread that to be a sanction action from the government entity, my bad. So. I'm, I'm all for honoring government sanctions. I mean, that's the point of enterprises. You work with governments. It's the action um, without sanction, without explanation, that is the concerning part. Jim? Uh, yeah, uh, not 
expressing uh, any preferences, um, but but it, but in terms of not being a great uh, experience uh, with a different different repository vendor uh, from the project health uh, angle. Uh, now that we have GitHub greatly uh, integrated into Linux Foundation's uh, Inside platform, that gives us the you know the, the beautiful dashboards to look at the activities. That's going to be lost if you go somewhere else. I don't think the Linux Foundation Inside team has the bandwidth to accommodate you know an arbitrary um, uh, uh, vendor uh, besides GitHub in, in short term. Okay, so I'll communicate back that it's possible, but it's a big ask, so make sure it's really worth it. Yeah, I think that makes sense, Dano. You know, the same way as uh, they'd be worried about being left behind, right? If the Ethereum community goes to another platform, it's, uh, you know, there are similar sorts of concerns, right, about the, the split kind of nature uh, when it comes to Hyperledger and collaboration and tooling and all of those sorts of things. So. Um, you know, it's, I think your direction sounds like a good direction. So, oh, sorry, I should have raised no, my go hand. Ahead, so, out of curiosity, is there anything in specific that Beso team is availing from GitHub? Anything specific or what from GitHub? For instance, are you guys using GitHub Actions that you rely on, or is there anything else that you rely on that is only part of GitHub? Right now, we use Circle CI, and we're about to transition to GitHub Actions in our October release. Um, we're getting ready to start up the beta cycle and start shifting over CI servers. Um, I think that's what prompts the discussion and the concern um, is that you know it would be all GitHub, and um, that process some side discussions about well, what if we created distributed repeatable builds, which is like no small project, but I think it's possible that we could have, you know, from the script, multiple people create the exact same binaries. So you just build it independently, share hashes and post it. That's one theory that came up, but um, there's no no concrete request for action. There's just, you know, uh, a concern that there might be a problem on the horizon and there might not be. Um, we don't know. We just, you know, they just, I think we just need to know what the boundaries are and what, 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 we need to navigate if, if things do change. And it was triggered by the move from Circle CI to GitHub Actions. All right. Uh, so I guess the next uh, topic is the project health. Uh, Jim, did you want to uh, take us through the discussion? Yeah, so I think at this point, um, uh, we've had uh, great discussions that, that resulted in a bunch of um, findings and actions to follow up on. Um, today, I, I just plan to give an update on some of the actions that took place uh, since the last time we had, um, and there's still more to be done. Um, so one of the, there are two actions uh, we had uh, from the, the last time we talked. Uh, one is, um, so we were going to talk to the Linux Insight team um, to discuss enhancement to the Insight platform for uh, automatic uh, analytics, uh, pulling data from GitHub, from other sources. So that, um, uh, thanks to the coordination from Lai and Tracy, uh, we were able to talk to the technical lead from that team. Um, we gave our uh, findings and the matrix that uh, resulted from our discussions to them. So they were going to look at it and, and uh, map those to possible future roadmap items for uh, Linux Foundation. Um, so we haven't followed up on that thread since then. Um, so that's a future uh, action to take uh, to get back, uh, circle back with them and see what um, uh, we can do in the short term uh, in the upcoming uh, inside release. So that needs to be said. 
Uh, the other follow-up was so Ryan and I were going to get together and talk about uh, setting up a new repository to code that can start doing some of the, the things that we don't believe are uh, possible with inside uh, ourselves with some custom code. Uh, so that hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. So I apologize for that. Um, I, I'm i hoping uh, next week when we or I guess two weeks from now, when we get together at uh, Dublin, uh, we can work on some, we can spend some time to work on some of this and make progress on the, on the, on the action. That's all I plan to, to share. Uh, and really, there's not much else that I, that I can't share. I don't know if Ryan or Tracy has others, other stuff that, that I can share. I don't have anything to share. Um, I just I wanted to reach back to the, the previous conversation, and uh, we can get data from GitLab and Garrett. Those are those are supported for insights. So that's great. Yeah, I guess the only thing I would add is just on the, the discussion that we had with the LFX Insights team. Uh, seemed very positive, right? Uh, they're, they're really looking uh, to understand kind of the requirements that we had and um, think about how they fit into the roadmaps that they have. So I, I, I think there's, you know, possibly some, some good sorts of uh, ideas that we've been able to in part, if you will, right through the discussions that we've been having here through the the task force, and so I, I think uh, you know we may end up in a situation where we, you know, can either have APIs or specific dashboards that we're we're able to create uh, to to focus in on kind of the metrics that we've been discussing. So, um, good discussion all around, I think. Uh, any questions on on kind of the update from Jim? All right. Well, thank you, Jim, uh, for the update. Any uh, any items that anybody did uh, think about since uh, we started the meeting that they want to bring up? Uh, Arun? Right. I just wanted to remind everyone to join the security task force this week. We had very low attendance. Okay, that's um, great. A uh, quick so... update of what's happening there, just for so, so that everybody is aware of what's happening in the security task force. So initially, I know um, there were a couple of weeks where we started discussing the scope of security task force itself to be so many in, to include so many items but then once we figured out exactly what needed to be done and after the previous discussion that we had in the tsc based on the feedback a specific um, and targeted uh, um, proposals have been put on in within the security task force wiki page so i'll be sending out an email with a couple of proposals that were discussed in the previous discussions previous meetings and I would request request everyone to please join the call. And maybe next time, next instance, next Tuesday that we are meeting is during the global forum. We can probably cancel that instance and catch up during the event and discuss how to go about with the task force itself and remaining pending actions that we can discuss briefly. And remind the, the folks on the call, when is the next security task force call? It was due to happen during the event on 13th, and that will be canceled because we will be at the Global Forum event. Okay, so um, just FYI, there is, um, as, as our rotating agenda goes, there 
is a slot for the security task force in next week's TSC meeting. Um, so I guess it's good timing if <laughs> if nothing else, right? Uh, given given when the next uh, normally off schedule one was for outside of the TSC. So um, there could be some discussion obviously next Thursday and then maybe some additional follow-up uh, at the Google forum. Sounds good. Um, there is probably one more update that I thought I'll bring it up now that we are all here. So there is mm -hmm. um, the, I know a few months back during the TSA call, David had brought in um, additional people from, I think the UX people from LF staff team to discuss the landing page for Hyperledger in terms of helping new contributors also getting new um, different personas, giving the information of what this we're looking for within Hyperledger. And as part of Hyperledger India chapter as well, we had come up with start here Hyperledger guide that would let new developers look out for where they can get involved easily, get plugged into within Hyperledger team, I mean, foundation community. Um, so this year we also have an internship uh, mentorship project that's going on, which is to enhance that UX part of, of that um, particular persona. So we had shared a couple of ideas and Bobby also had reviewed from the LMDWG group. And um, we had email conversations so far. I know I have to follow up on email replies. There's a big list of emails pending on me, but there would be proposal of a new task force that may come in based on that uh, discussion. Okay. A quick heads up of that. Okay, appreciate that. Um, and then speaking of that particular topic, I know um, that was coming out of the the task force, the Project Gaps task force, where we uh, had reviewed those um, mock-ups for the uh, new website and how that would flow. Anybody from the Hyperledger staff have any update on the progress of that? I think, you know, where we ended that was saying it would be great if we could have something where we could actually play with it and click on things and see how it would work. Um, and I'm just curious if there's been any update of where that's at and when we might expect to see that. So Daniela, Hart, Rai, Sean, I know David's not on the call today. Anybody have any updates or should we wait till David's around? I think we'll need to wait for David. I don't know anything more. Um, I do know that our design team has been really overwhelmed. So it's been difficult to get them, you know, to get their time. So I, I, I don't know. Okay. Sorry, right. Jason. Yeah, go ahead, Hart. Oh, so I was just going to say sorry. I'm in the same boat. Okay, no worries. No worries. Um, any other items, last items uh, that anybody would like to discuss before we close the call? All right, I see no hands, uh, nobody coming off mute. I will take that as a no. Uh, again, we do have two items, at least on the agenda for next week. Uh, we have a presentation uh, on Orion uh, that is scheduled. Um, hopefully, Arno, you've been able to confirm that. And then secondly, the security task force. Yeah, it's not confirmed yet, but I'm hoping it will work. Okay, so we're hoping for that one to come through um, before the global forum. Um, so look forward to talking to everybody next week, and we hope you have a great, uh, great week. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you Tracy.